In the words of the legendary chef and my personal hero, Anthony Bourdain, food is everything we are. It's an extension of a nationalist feeling, ethnic feeling, your personal history, your province, your region, your tribe, your grandma. It's inseparable from those from the get-go. Welcome to Every Dish, A Story, a podcast about a place of food in our lives and what it meant to our ancestors. I'm your host, Kat, and I'm going to take you to a new location every two weeks to connect to who we are. If you've ever been to Ikea anywhere in the world, you know them. Or at the very least, you know of them. I'm, of course, talking about the Swedish meatballs. Welcome to Every Dish's Story, Episode 7. I'm your host, Kat, and today we're going to Sweden. Despite their Viking warrior roots, today's Scandinavian nations are not known for their fierce pride or strong sense of nationalism. In the 21st century, on the contrary, Scandinavian countries are regarded as a model of stability and compassion, an example of progressive politics, strong social support and gender equality. They also offer a warm welcome and a tolerant of other views and cultures. I mean, just yesterday, Sweden got its first female prime minister, and I couldn't be more happy about this. And it just really proves the point. In any case, if there's one thing that Scandinavians and especially Swedes hold dear, it's their meatballs. A bitter outcry recently went off when Scandinavian Airlines, the main carrier for Denmark, Norway and Sweden, released a questionably witty advert debunking myths about where Scandinavia's most symbolic exports actually come from. What is truly Nordic? Absolutely nothing. The voiceover smugly declares, presented a not-so-subtle ode to the virtues of travel through an acknowledgement of the Nordic people's plunderous past. Danish pastries, it continues, are actually Austrian. Norwegian staples are actually American. Democracy, of course, is Greek. Modern eco-friendly windmills took their inspiration from ancient Persia. And even Switzerland is thanked for the compulsory parental leave. Then halfway through, the music stops for climatic effect to announce the gut punch. Swedish meatballs might also not be so Swedish. Before the grand opening, they are in fact of Turkish origin. Typically, Swedish meatballs are made from a mixture of beef and pork, pan-fried, and served alongside the stark contrast of sweet lingonberries and a bitter pickle. All this is balanced and softened by fluffy mashed or boiled potatoes, which are perfect for soaking up the creamy gravy lavished on top. This combination is as intertwined with our idea of Sweden as ABBA or Volvo. But just because it's the fourth most popular dish among Swedes for a weekday dinner, it doesn't mean that it's their own. Perhaps somewhat offended, the Swedish Institute shared an educational video clip which claims that a Swedish cookery book from 1751 first mentions a fried means meat dish called, I believe, Hatshimonkar which is spherical in nature and thus the spiritual forefather to today's shatpula, a recipe of which dates back to 1882. Increasing ease of preparation and consequently popularity of meatballs rose with the invention of the meat grinder in the 1880s, while rising wealth caused the balls to expand from bite-sized appetizers to the robust, gravy-soaked main dish we know and love today. Sweden's imperialist claim to the dish emerged after the Chicago World's Fair in 1893, a precursor to today's World Expo, where meatballs were introduced as a part of Swedish buffet, and a recipe was picked up by the American chefs and forever associated with the country. Of course, this clever market ploy was far from the truth. Unsurprisingly, the idea of rolling meat into nice, easy-to-fry balls was hardly unique. Fried meatballs were cooked more than 2,000 years ago in China, and in England, Henry IV, who served pork balls to celebrate his coronation in 1399. Many other European countries, including but not limited to Poland, Italy, Germany, Bulgaria and Hungary, have created their own versions of meatballs. Naturally, the rivalry is strongest when the distance between countries is the smallest, especially in the case of neighboring Finland, the former colony of Sweden, which also counts meatballs among its proudest national dishes. I really don't know what makes a meatball Swedish or Finnish. Perhaps we tend to season ours very lightly, and there's also old bread or some other cheap ingredient besides the ground meat, says Santari Wasara, a Finnish chef, cookbook author, and a hungry of Tampere ambassador. Meatballs, he continues, were something that my grandmother used to make. The childhood memory kind of fantasy meatball is very simple, sometimes fried, sometimes boiled, served with dark sauce, mashed potatoes, and pickled little onions still waters my mouth and warms my heart when I think of it. 
Of course, IKEA, with its never-ending growth, it actually serves 150 million meatballs in a single year worldwide, has played an important role in keeping the meatball in Sweden's purview across the rest of the globe. Swedish meatballs are really based on a recipe King Charles XII brought back from Turkey in the early 18th century, said a tweet from Sweden's official Twitter account in 2018, to the delight of Turkish people everywhere. Let's stick to the facts, shall we? According to legend, after losing the war against the Russians, the Swedish king was banished to the region of the Ottoman Empire that is modern Moldova. Well, over there, he developed a love for kofta, the Mediterranean zone mixed ground meatballs that have been a part of the Ottoman Empire's imperial cookery since the 15th century. When Charles returned to his own empire five years later, he took the recipe with him, as well as coffee and cabbage, both because he liked them and as a means of strengthening diplomatic relations. The 2018 proclamation has triggered its own round of mental anguish and jingoistic bashing, strangely reminiscent of the current wave of backlash from the Scandinavian airlines. It seems that as suave and sophisticated as the Swedes are, some of them are still terribly attached to their round balls of meat. The cliched stereotype that Sweden is a meatball-loving nation is accurate in a lot of ways. And although Swedes may not consume meatballs at every meal, as the Swedish cook from the Muppets would have us believe, but they do like meatballs, served with potatoes and a rich, thick sauce, nearly as much as they do Zlatan Ibrahimovic or the Eurovision Song Contest, to name a few examples. The meatballs may be meticulously crafted from the best cuts of beef, or they could be frozen and thawed on the way home from work and popped into an oven for a fast and easy meal. It doesn't matter how many there are, as long as there are enough. It has made many people wonder why meatballs have become such a popular food around the world and how they became so deeply associated with Sweden before becoming a global favorite. After all, the history of meatballs is as rich as the sauce in which they are served and, perhaps surprisingly, does not begin in Sweden and not even in Northern Europe. Sources point out that the four joys meatballs commonly cooked in China today originated from ancient Chinese cooking techniques first used in 221 BC. That is long before Sweden as a country even existed. There's also a recipe for a dish very similar to modern meatballs and can be found in an ancient Roman cookbook, Apicus. Apicus suggests chopping minced meat with the middle of the thin white bread soaked in wine, which is similar to the way meatballs are made nowadays. The ancient Iranian dish, köfte tabrizi, as well as the medieval pomme d'orange, bear resemblance to modern meatballs. Clearly, their origins are not in Sweden. However, the popularity around the world is due to the way the Swedes cook them and how they ended up in Sweden. For most of the Middle Ages, Sweden was a rather poor country with very little influence. However, after it left the Union of Kalmar in 1523 and became independent from Denmark and Norway, a period of empire building began, with influence spreading throughout Europe. Unfortunately for the largest country 